All right, this is Mr. Song, or sorry, Mr. Kerbis and... Hey, Mr. Song. There we go. And uh, we are doing a video for day three, experimental probability. So experiments, they don't always go the same way as the theory, but the law of large averages, law of large numbers, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. In the long term, they'll end up, end up similar. So here, um, in this experiment, we're going to take two coins, and we're going to toss them 356 times and then record the number of heads occurring at each toss when it was recorded. So the results were 89 times no heads, 95 times two heads. How are we going to work out one head? Well, the total should be 356. So we can write, write 356 at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. And the, the co frequency column should add up to 356. So we can work backwards. Minus... 89 minus 95. Okay. And that is 172. Now, given the context of this problem, does that number make sense based on what we know about coins? I'm sure. So this middle one mm -hmm. should be about double these ones, right? So if we're doing relative frequency, then we take the frequency and divide it by the total. So since I have 172 there, I'm just going to be a little bit time efficient and divide by 356 to get this, 0 0.483. That should be good for decimal places, eh? Three significant figures. And then 89, 300, oops, I'm thinking about years, so my Okay, 0 0.25, wow, you don't get much better than that. Okay, and finally, 0 0.26, what would you call that? Seven. 0 0.267. Okay, what is the relative frequency always gonna add up to? I'm just gonna do that in my head, I'm gonna say one. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> So we copy and complete the table. The second part is a bit, bit funny as a question in a way, but you have to watch out for it because very often on long problems, the answer above folds into the one below. So what's your best estimate of the chance of the following events occurring from this data? So what's your best estimate? So we have, a, we have this data from the experimental uh, experiment we did, tossing two coins, and we have the relative frequency. And that is actually the chance of getting zero heads, one head, and two heads. So the best estimate for getting zero heads would be 0 0.25. Good. Now, it's an estimate, so it doesn't have to be exactly the same. And we mentioned before the law of large numbers. So if you think about what, what do you think should happen as you're doing this a million times or something, like, or 356 million times, right? You would expect over the long term that about half the time you would get one head, about a quarter of the time you get zero heads, and about how often would you get two heads? 0.25. Good. So the experiment and the reality don't always match up exactly like they did with zero heads, but they're pretty close, and as you do this more and more and more, then you should get closer and closer to these theoretical results. Right. Or you've got a bump coin. Bias coin, I think, is the term. Bias. Bum coin isn't this. It's not really right. Um, here, I've taken out part D. You'll see why in a second. This gets pretty large, and I think after part A, B, and C, you'll get you'll get the idea. So from part A, the sample space. Do you want to talk a little bit about what sample space is? Sample space is a list of all possible outcomes. Okay. Yeah. So what are all the different things you could get when you roll a six-sided die? What well, um, assuming they're a fair six-sided die, a sample space would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. And the sample space would be the same even if it's not fair, right? Right. So part. Well, it could be e. the dies we have in in the cabinet over there. It could be like two, two, three, three, three feet. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, if, yeah I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So that it has a, a regular one, not like our transcendental. We should show right. the kids those. Those are pretty cool. Um, the sexes of a three-child family. So, we could have the ultimate family, boy, 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 right? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Or, you're a three-child family. Yeah, I have uh, a girl, boy, boy. 
girl, boy, boy. And mm. why did you say it in the order girl, boy, boy? Well, my sister's older. Ah, so we're yeah. starting oldest to youngest. Yeah. Good. So that girl could have also been in the middle. Right. Or as the last with two older brothers to make sure everything works out well for her. Right. And um, then you could have a family like mine with two girls, no boys, but we'll assume maybe I have one later. Girl, girl, boy. And that boy could be the middle child. Poor kid. Or... <laughs> <laughs> You're the oldest one. All right. Boy, Boy girl, girl. girl. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing one. What's the last one? Mm, all three girls? All three girls. Right. Dad never has a chance to get in the bathroom in that family, hey? Wow. I grew up with a family of three girls as a, as a friend group, and uh, their father was so um, distraught about never getting into the bathroom that he took the door off. <laughs> it's a true story. So... Three sex families. So the order in which three boys can be lined up, that's a bit different, different spin there. So what happens with that one there? Well, let's name the boys first. I'm going to okay. say Adam, Brian, and Cody. So A, B, and C. Adam, Brian, Cody. Make life easier. A, B, C. Yeah. Okay. So it could be A, B, C. Mm -hmm. Or A, C, B. B, A, C. Okay. B, C, A. You're being systematic here. What, what's your choices here? C, A, B, mm -hmm. C, B, A. And what is your strategy when you were going through listing all of them? Well, I start from A, or alpha order, A, B, C, and mm -hmm. then I keep the first letter and switch the last two. And then I start with B and put A, C, because that's alphabetical order, and then B again and switch the last two and so on. That way I can keep track of what I've counted and whatnot. This one only has six uh, lists or six items, but when you get to four more, there'll be a lot more. That's why we took right. that one out for ourselves, eh? Yeah. So we would develop at some point some strategies for figuring out um, the, the bigger sets, but for now, if you list them all, it makes the subsequent answering of questions about probability very easy if you can see the entire sample space. Right.